Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news about programs and services provided by the departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. This past week, Kansas City welcomed thousands of visitors downtown for the Big 12 Men's Basketball Championship and the Planet Comic Con Convention. The Big 12 Championship includes several days of basketball fun at the Sprint Center, including an outdoor fan fest, a 5K fun run, and of course, the tournament itself. The championship annually brings in thousands of visitors and has an estimated local economic impact of about $9 million. Meanwhile, Planet Comic Con, the area's largest pop culture and comic book convention, is taking place March 14th through the 16th at the convention center. Nearly 20,000 people are expected to attend, creating an estimated economic impact of $4 million. The fun continues this week as the city welcomes many more visitors for St. Patrick's Day festivities, including the 42nd annual St. Patrick's Day Parade, the Westport St. Patrick's Day Run, and the Brookside Warm-Up Parade, among others. Beginning April 1st, the city's animal shelter will require people relinquishing their pets to first make an appointment. The shelter is making this policy change to provide better customer service. In the past year, the shelter has seen a 71% increase in public interactions with more than 10,000 animal-related services provided. This new policy will ensure a safer lobby and customer service area and provide individuals with more one-on-one -on -one time with the shelter staff. For more information about the shelter, visit kcpetproject.org. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities, bringing you more news of upcoming shows and events taking place at your city facilities. Planet Comic Con, Kansas City's number one comic book and pop culture convention, returns to Bartle Hall March 14th through 16th. The three-day event features top comic book creators, a full schedule of panel and presentations, a vendor area filled with collectibles, and appearances by star celebrities including William Shatner, LeVar Burton, Chad Coleman, Michael Dorn, and Lee Majors, to name a few. For ticket information and schedule of events, go to planetcomiccon.wordpress.com. Warhorse, the 2011 Tony Award winner for Best Play, comes to the Music Hall April 1st through 6th. War Horse is a remarkable tale of courage, loyalty, and friendship between a young boy, Albert, and his beloved horse, Joey. When Joey is sold to the cavalry and shipped from England to France, Albert embarks on an extraordinary journey to find him and bring him home. War Horse is a universal story about hope in the face of adversity, and the production is an anthem for peace. Tickets are available at the Municipal Auditorium box office and all Ticketmaster locations. The ASICS Show Me National Qualifier Volleyball Tournament will be held in Kansas City from April 5th through 7th and April 11th through 13th. U.S. Volleyball has been coming to Kansas City since 2009, bringing 13,000 attendees to KC and infusing more than 13 million into the local economy each year. Spectator admission to the 2014 Show Me National Qualifier is free. For a great family fun experience, come to the Kansas City Roller Warriors next bout on April 19th at Municipal Auditorium Arena for their winter season home team championship, Rink of Fire. It's also Girl Scout night and the Roller Warriors invite Girl Scouts and their families for a special meet and greet at 4.15 p.m. For ticket information, go to kcrollerwarriors.com. These are just a few of the many events that Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities offer our community. To learn about more events, visit kcconvention.com and click on the events calendar or call 816-513-5000. A question we often get when attending community meetings is what can I do about my neighbor that I know is dealing drugs out of his house? Of course you can report it to any patrol station, but don't forget the TIPS hotline is always available. Once the call is made, citizens often expect to see an officer pulling up to the suspect's house moments later. 
we thought we would give you a window of how the process works. We begin with Officer Kevin Bame at Crime Stoppers. We would take that information, we put it in the form of a, a report that is then forwarded on to the particular investigative agency that's handling that crime, in this case the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department's Narcotics Unit. Any information that's received to the TIPS hotline would be eligible for a cash reward up to $1,000, uh, depending on where the arrest is made and uh, the circumstances involving that arrest. Once the call is forwarded to KCPD, it is immediately sent to the appropriate unit. Sergeant Renee Reyes explains. Well, once we receive a complaint or a tips hotline call, those uh, complaints are reviewed and then forwarded to the applicable squad. If someone calls in a complaint, we ask that person if they would like to leave their name or if they would like it to be anonymous. We do not require anybody to leave their name. It's only if they want to be contacted with uh, the outcome of the situation, then we by all means will recontact them. Whenever it's assigned to the detective, they don't just use that phone call. They'll go and um, do surveillance on the location, contact other neighbors in the area, contact the officers that work the area to see if there's actually that kind of activity in the area or at that location. And then we also use other intelligence databases to confirm who's living there, what kind of activity they have, and other several other means before we actually just act on it. A lot of times we do get phone calls at the unit, people wanting to know about complaints that they've made and saying that they don't see any police activity. What I try to explain to them is the majority of the stuff that the, my unit, the street crimes unit, or the drug enforcement unit do it, are things that you would not detect. A normal citizen would not detect the police activity. Um, every single complaint is worked on. A lot of times we'll get complaints from several different people on the same location. They're all compiled together. We're constantly checking the databases on complaints that keep recurring, that, um, that specify a lot of violent activity. We try to target those immediately. Um, we get, I would say, hundreds of complaints a day. And so those are always, like I said, sorted out and sent on to the detectives that are applicable to that situation. I always encourage people to call in and make complaints when they see activity or situations. It doesn't necessarily have to be drug activity. It could be any kind of criminal activity call it in to Crime Stoppers, call it in to TIPS, um, call your local station, uh, police station, and let them know that there's, because any station can take complaints, and it can be any time of criminal activity. Call it in, let us know, and we will absolutely act on that right away. If you call a station, officers can, depending on the type of criminal activity you see, they could respond right there at the moment, at that moment. Um, depending on the, like I said, on the criminal activity, it may take, you know, a couple of days for it to get forwarded to us, to the drug units or to the gun units, but we'll get that information and we will act on it. Everyone has the right to live in a safe environment. For the sake of you, your family, and your other neighbors, don't let illegal drug activities destroy your neighborhood. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. My name is Kimberly Hess and I'm the director here at Lakeside Nature Center. And uh, Lakeside Nature Center is at 4701 East Gregory Boulevard in Swope Park. We have quite a few different educational programs going on here at the, at the center. Every Saturday at 10 o'clock we have a free program called Mother Nature Reads where Mother Nature comes out. Um, she'll read a story, she has a pop, uh, she'll do a puppet show, they'll get out animals. It's a really, really great thing for kids. Uh, we also have quite a few uh, programs. We have habitat hikes and there's wildlife programs, there's feathers, scales, slime, which goes through all the different types of animals. So we have a wide variety of wildlife animals and we also, with the habitat hikes, we take you right out on, on Fox Hollow Trail and we can visit uh, a prairie environment, we have a wetlands environment and an upland forest environment where we can go and uh, teach you about all the, hab the habitats and the animals that live there. We also have the Blue River Rescue coming up, which is April 5th. It starts at 8 and runs till noon, and it is a fantastic event. We get over a 1,000 people that come to the center and help us clean up the Little Blue. Uh, we go from all the way up north down here to the center, and there's different spots where we'll be cleaning up trash, and we get thousands and thousands of pounds of trash cleaned up every year. So it's a really fantastic event. It's for the whole family, all ages. Um, there's also donuts and coffee in the morning, so come early and get a donut. Um, found on the side of the road, uh, very emaciated, uh, just not much to him at all, just skin and bones. So he, he, they brought him in about a month and a half ago, and we've been able to fatten him up. Um, it's just been a really hard winter for all the other, for birds of prey, real yeah. bad winter. And uh, he's going back out this weekend. So. 
And he's a great horned owl. Pretty sure it's a male because he's small. Mm-hmm. Can you clap for us? When you actually come out and work them, because you want them to build up muscle. And this is, uh, it's just flying back and forth is how they build up muscle. And then uh, we're able to know whether they're releasable. Uh, Cody is our resident coyote. Um, he's two years old, and <laughs> he wants to say hello. He, uh, he will be here. He's non-releasable. That's why he's here at the center. We got him over a year ago when he was about nine months old. Someone had taken him as an eyes-closed puppy and thought he'd make a good pet. And coyotes do not make good pets uh, in any way, shape, or form, as you can see. And it's actually very, very illegal. Uh, MDC confiscated him. And he had two options, to be euthanized or to be trained as a uh, display animal. We do work hands-on with him, um, and uh, there's a select group of staff that actually does it, because he can be a very dangerous animal. Being imprinted, he's very um, unpredictable. Mm -hmm. uh, he does, the only thing he's ever known are people, so we're his pack. Right. And that's what he really does like people, but uh, when you get in there, he treats you like another coyote. Right. Which means he'll come up and he tries to bite your ears. Um, and all of that. So he's a wild animal that doesn't know he's wild, basically is what it is. All right, if you do need to call the center, our front line is 816-513-8960. And if someone does not answer, please, please leave a message and we will get back to you. Um, that's for if you have rental questions or questions about our educational programs, or if you have animal questions and you don't know what to do if you find an animal, please give the center a call. Beginning March 18th, the James Street Bridge will close for six months of construction. The bridge is located in the city's central industrial district and connects Kansas City, Missouri with our sister city, Kansas City, Kansas. Work will include rehabilitating the deck and substructure of the bridge with completion scheduled for early fall. The city's spring curbside leaf and brush collection begins the week of April 14th for residents in the city's north zone. On your regular trash day, residents may leave up to 20 bags or bundles of leaves and brush on the curb. Collection for residents in the central zone will be the week of April 21st, and pickup for residents in the south zone will be the week of April 28th. To find out when your pickup day is, visit kcwaterservices.org. Residents may also dispose of woody debris at the city's three leaf and brush drop-off centers, which will open for the season on Saturday, March 15th. The drop-off centers are located at 1815 North Choteau Traffic Way, 10301 Raytown Road, and 11660 North Main Street. For more information on these centers, visit kcmo.gov and search for leaf and brush drop-off centers. The city's Airport Terminal Advisory Group is holding a series of public meetings to receive input on potential changes to Kansas City International Airport's terminal configuration. The group's final meeting will take place on Thursday, March 20th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. at Johnson County Community College's Polsky Theater. Learn more information by visiting kcmo.gov and search for Airport Terminal Advisory Group. For more information about any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.gov and search for the weekly report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.